Hi, so here you can see a lot of the different uh, exhibits that were seized during the course of this investigation. On the table in front of me here we have uh, everything from different types of paint and chemicals to ribbons and embossers. Uh, these would be the equipment that they were using to manufacture uh, fraudulent identifications. As we move over to this table here you can see uh, the extent of the firearms and the weaponry that was seized during the course of this investigation from uh, crossbows all the way up to a lot of long guns. Uh, as we move across the table, we mentioned uh, a lot of these uh, guns had been modified. For example, we've got one down in front of me here, which started out as a long gun, but it's been modified into what looks uh, much like a handgun. Uh, and moving across the table to the rest, uh, you can see just kind of the extent of the firepower and the weaponry that was seized uh, during the course of this investigation. As we come in behind me here, uh, you'll recognize on the table uh, point of sale terminals, skimming equipment, uh, credit card uh, type point of sale uh, um, terminals, uh, to passports, and then coming down in behind me here, you'll recognize a lot of this common identification that most people carry in their wallets, that being credit cards, social insurance uh, numbers, Alberta health care cards, driver's licenses, uh, PAL licenses, all of these are the types of documents that were being produced uh, fraudulently uh, by the two accused with the equipment that I showed you earlier. I'm here today to speak about an investigation that ultimately started with a vehicle stop and ended with the recovery of 28 firearms. Back in late 2018, we were called to a residence regarding a prolific offender named Matthew Stuthard, who had been released into the community on several conditions. When members attended the residence to speak with Mr. Stuthard, who was at the time being monitored by investigators within our targeted offender section, they were unable to locate him. About a week later, our members conducted a vehicle stop on a stolen Dodge Durango, which was being operated by Mr. Stuthard and another male by the name of Alexander Alari. At the time of the vehicle stop, both men were wanted on a combined total of 97 outstanding warrants and from what we understand, we're attempting to flee the province and head to the East Coast. Given the significance, the significant amount of warrants and the stolen vehicle they were operating, both individuals were taken into custody at that time. As investigators continued to progress their investigation, search warrants were obtained for residences, vehicles, and a storage locker, where a combined total of 28 non-restricted firearms, some of which had been modified, were located. A crossbow and a compound bow were also seized. In addition, approximately 2,300 stolen and fraudulent identification documents were recovered, as well as the equipment to produce fraudulent identification. Ultimately, we believe that the two accused were obtaining people's identification through criminal activities such as theft of mail and theft from vehicles. We also believe the two accused were manufacturing fake identification to fraudulently obtain property, including firearms, and would then sell them. As a result of this 16-month-long investigation, both men were charged with a total of 77 offenses, including identity theft, fraud, weapons trafficking, and drug-related offenses. I can tell you that both accused were known to police. However, I can't elaborate any further on their criminal history. The information that we have leads us to believe that uh, they were selling the firearms to others who were engaged in a criminal lifestyle. Typically firearms would be modified to enhance the ability to conceal them. Take a sawed off shotgun for example, uh, the smaller you make a firearm the easier it is to transport and or conceal. We believe the accused were obtaining the personal identification through crimes such as theft of mail and theft from vehicles. Um, although these are kind of small crimes, we can see how they escalated into much more serious offenses. Well, it's important for people if they have been victim of a, a crime such as theft for mail, that they do report it to police and Canada Post and if necessary their financial institution, just so an investigation can be initiated and, and just as importantly to protect their identity. I would suggest that thousands of people were impacted by a group such as this. Uh, and, uh, and those impacts last for a long time. Uh, we're all familiar with identity theft and, and, and how that can affect credit ratings and, and people's uh, financial stability long into the future. 
Well, I can provide you some numbers. In 2018, the EPS seized uh, 1,550 firearms. In 2019, that number increased to 1,772. Although we've seen an increase in the past couple of years, uh, this could be attributed to a couple of things. Are there more guns on the street? That could be the case, but it could also be a case of police are just getting better at finding them. I can tell you in, in this year, 2020, uh, so far we've, we've seized 313 firearms.